in, in a, any population of epilepsy patients being treated in any institution, there's a very small percentage of them, very small percentage of them that can have a normal EEG and a normal MRI, etc. Right? However, um, we, uh, we, we tend to take these situations with a lot of um, caution, meaning to say that if it were the child is attending me and uh, I'm being told that there are seizures, I would say, well, it's not the situation with your son, but it would, it would be a situation where I'd ask for a home video. So you tell me that he flaps about and he falls and he does this, well, I want to see. Because sometimes we look at them and we know that they're not epileptic seizures. That's one. The other one is that if I am convinced from the clinical story, yeah, so say that you can't get a home video because they're not so frequent or they're very short. By the time you go to get the video, it's finished. Uh, what I normally do if, I, if I'm committing someone to lifelong or to, to, to more than a couple of years of anti-epileptic medications is that I, I monitor them. Uh, I do a video EEG telemetry overnight to try and see if there's something that's happening during sleep. Even little kind of small um, uh, epileptic discharges that might have gone amiss in a short one hour window EEG and that sometimes does give an answer but I, I can tell you in my population and I have hundreds of patients I have only maybe one patient who has a normal EEG um, that's being treated with anti-epileptic medications and that's for safety reasons because in a couple of them he went blue um, but it's very very unusual to have very frequent seizures and a normal EEG if they're infrequent I can understand that and one can treat if one is worried about the child's safety but I would keep at it, keep at it, and sit on top of him until I try and find out what's wrong with him. CT scans, certainly no. CT scans, we kind of reserve them now for someone turning up to say to casualty with a big seizure and there's weakness down one side of the body, we want to make sure that he hasn't had a stroke or a tumor because that can rule that out. MRI scans are the mainstay of, of investigating epilepsy, and by all means, we never, we don't do them on an annual basis, certainly not. What, what you need to do is, if, if, if there is a question that there's a persistent focus on your EEG test, that whoever's taking care of you would seek an opinion for someone to look at the MRI scan and scrutinize it a little bit better. I have seen scans from, from years ago that have been understood to be normal, and they weren't. So just if there is a persistent focus in your EEGs, that would be kind of a stimulus for the scans to be restudied again. Yeah, just a comment on the MRIs as well is that, you know, every few years MRI technology improves as well. So if your last MRI was 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it can be worth repeating it. Um, that, that there are different models of the VNS, uh, and yes, they do, they do have a lifetime, uh, but it, I, I can't answer in detail, but just think of it this way, the current, the, 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 the current that's used and the settings that are used can make the battery run out quicker on one person more than another, so if you're using a high current and a higher frequency, it'll run out a little bit quicker. So yes, yes, it, it often does need replacement. The magnet, the magnet is used for patients who get a warning before the seizure, so just in case the seizure is starting to happen at a time where the cycle is off and you just swipe the magnet across the VNS and it activates it. Well, as I, as I mentioned, some, a lot of my patients, we don't use the magnet that much. Uh, but if a parent can see it in a child, of course, the parent can use the magnet. Yeah. yeah? So if you see him starting to go, uh, 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 before he goes on to the, you do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, the answer is yes. I mean, anybody who's uh, had a new onset seizure, you know, should be seen as, as soon as possible. And, uh, and then the, the kind of standard testing is, is really with an MRI scan and, and an EEG. Um, so, for example, in the, in the UK, the, the, the NICE guidelines that they use in the UK, uh, in terms of a new onset seizure, recommend that somebody be seen within six weeks. Um, so or in two week, within two weeks, if possible. So. One, of, one of the good systems we have in Ireland here is that we're a very close uh, net of, of, of uh, physicians, but this is kind of something that's evolved over time. So, uh, do you have to see a neurologist after a couple of seizures or three seizures? Preferably, <coughs> ideally, not six weeks, two weeks. 
ideally. It doesn't always happen like that. But a lot of our general pediatricians in Ireland are very well trained and have very, very close relations with us. And uh, what happens often is that if there's a long waiting list and there's a patient waiting to be seen, is that we would try as much as we can to accommodate an EEG and give advice to the pediatrician to treat. A lot of my patients, when I see them once or twice and I stabilize them, I send them back to their pediatricians and their ongoing treatment is with them. So uh, we try to overcome the problem of waiting lists by involving the pediatricians in the management of epilepsy generally. The six weeks thing is not, is not really realistic, if we're to be honest. You know, in, 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 this is kind of going, going back in time. I mean, in, in, in the case of kind of my parents and that, that, that you know, wouldn't have known very much about it. It would have seemed something definitely with a, with, a, with a kind of stigma attached to it. So therefore, the best thing was to kind of run away from it in, in, in a way. I suppose there still is, there, there is always a residual kind of stigma about it. I mean, obviously, it's much less nowadays. But people are still, because it's just they don't know very much about it if they haven't come across or experienced it or know, know somebody with it. Um, there is always an element um, of, of that, but it's decreasing, I think, you know. Yeah, it, it can very much be a side effect of the, of the medication. So it can make you tired or low energy or have um, cognitive symptoms or um, oversleep. So, so it can very much be that, and sometimes it means a reduction in dose or, or an adjustment or thinking about another medication if that's um, affecting, uh, affecting things enough. Can I, can, can I just, uh, ju ju just one of the other things that can happen with, with, with epilepsy sometimes in a very small percentage of patients, if they were tolerating the medication for quite a while, yeah, and this kicked in after you've tolerated the medication okay, sometimes if you have a lot of epileptic activity during sleep it might keep you, you, you might not ma have any clear clinical seizures for anyone to see, you might not be aware, but your EEG overnight is very, very active with epileptiform activity, so your sleep is not consolidated properly, so you haven't really slept, and you're sleeping throughout the daytime. So that's just something to think of if you had tolerated the medication for quite a while, and this is something new that happened. But by and large, most of the time, it's a side effect of the medication. Depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a big bleed or a big tumour, even, even if you move, yeah, sometimes it can do. Uh, we do sedate some of our kids, and some of our kids even have to have a general anaesthetic. So she didn't appear to move much during this. Um, How old is she? She's 11. 11. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if, if there, 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 there are two things that can be done. One of them is to have a mock test. Yeah, it's not, it's not to do the scan itself, mm -hmm. but to test how stable she, she holds herself. So, uh, you know, we sometimes, there are places that have mock scans in the hospital. We don't have one, but you can emulate it somewhere and ask her to remain stable. And if she's saying, yes, I'm stable, I'm stable, I'm stable, you know, she's not. Um, <laughs> uh, but we do tend, to, we do, if we have a lot of movement artifacts, because it is, it is, there's a long waiting list for the test and it's an expensive test and we want to get the best out of it. If we're not 100% sure that the child will be lying still, if you're above the age of three or so, we give you a general anaesthetic. If you're below that, often a dose of sedation can help. Um, as far as surgery is concerned, all you need is a identifiable focus, full stop, regardless of your underlying cause. Um, in as far as the VNS, it tends to work well for patients with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome and the related what we call epileptic encephalopathies, um, which means uh, kids with learning difficulty and severe bad epilepsy with drop attacks, in particular tonic seizures, stiffening seizures. Say tends tends deuce, hmm? deuce, syndrome. deuce syndrome can be used. People tend to veer towards the ketogenic diet more. Um, 
I, I have reservations about using the VNS for Duce syndrome because the natural history of Duce syndrome is still very unclear to a lot of people. It's a spectrum, and 50% of those patients go to bed one night and wake up seizure-free, and 50% of them go down a real dark path. So I tend to play with medications for as much as I can and see which way they're going, and if they're going down that dark path, then we have to think of things like VNS and the ketogenic diet. Yeah, most of the more recent clips are MRI compatible, but it is good to know the like the type of clip. Usually, when a clip is put in, they will should or should give you the the type and model of the clip, and then the radiology department can just check that and tell you whether it's MRI compatible or not. Um, so most ones that are put in nowadays are MRI compatible or should be MRI compatible. But I will say, in, in general, just a, a low white cell count can occur, particularly when, with many of the medications. Um, and then if you're on more than one of those medications, it can compound that. So um, again, it kind of depends on how low as well. Um, you know, Sometimes it's necessary. It's low enough to yeah. act on it and, uh, and, and think about using a different medication. Or um, it is important to look for other reasons for it as well. Um, and then. Um, you know, there are medications that can stimulate the white cell count, but they're only used in very fairly rare occasions, you know, so, but certainly the medications can do it, and it's something that we look out for when somebody is on, especially on more than one anti-seizure medication.